I finished the final quest of Cassette Beast at 45 hours for my playtime, and I really enjoyed my time with it. Cassette Beast is a really fun monster collecting game that kind of takes the genre and spins it. You don't physically capture the monsters as you do in most of them. You record the data, almost like a Digimon story, but instead of the way that Digimon story does it, where you run into them enough times and then you're able to replicate them, here you have to physically record them. You are at risk during that time. If you take a hit during that time, you could lose the fight, could not be able to capture them. It has a lot of mechanics that allow you to offset that risk and make it more certain, but you're going to have to dig into the game to be able to unlock those mechanics. Each and every type of monster that you collect and each of every type that the monsters can be interacts with each other in a different and cool way. Fire can melt plastic, turning it into a poison type, or if fire hits water, it creates a healing steam, which heals the water type. You can melt ice into water, or you can burn a plant. You can even hit an astral type, and when you hit the astral type, it gives it back more action points every round. Action points being the replacement for a stamina bar or for power points that you have like in Pokemon. But those interactions I mentioned a moment ago are just a few of the interactions you can have with just fire, and each element interacts with each other element in a different way that makes it really interesting to play around with not just the type that your monster is, but also the type that your abilities are, your stickers that you apply to your tapes. And you can collect a huge number of stickers over the course of the game. Not all tapes can equip all stickers that allow you to make some pretty busted combinations. By the end of the game, I had a fire lizard that started every battle with a chance to roll a d20 and inflict damage based on that. And then would follow up with a melee attack. I had a floating bug trying to be vague here for the sake of spoilers though you're going to be seeing some footage in the background that was able to uh, roll again after it attacked and because of that it meant that it could use an ability and then at the end of the round it would use another ability if it had the ap to do so i had an extremely tanky beast that stayed on the field and was able to use its defense to attack with a couple of the abilities that it had there are so many fun combinations you can make that I would be really surprised if other than just looking up the best monsters and best builds online, if your playthrough was the same as mine or anybody else's. And all of this mechanically becomes even more interesting when you add in the fact that you can fuse temporarily in battle different monsters together with your partner. So this means that at any time you could take a fire monster and a water monster and fuse them together and then they have all of their stickers for moves to be able to use and that's not even counting the fact that you can use a, a sticker that lets you meld your abilities between your partner so you can share all of your abilities it's, there's so much depth in this combat system that it was really really fun to play around with i had a gear dragon that had the ability to shoot over walls that enemies might try to use and got ap back whenever he attacked and it's just such a blast mechanically but all those mechanics could be wasted if there's not something good to fight against right and that's where i think that cassette beast also succeeds the boss fights are big and cool Sometimes you're fighting against rangers and the ranger captains specifically, which are the stand-ins for badges or, or gym leaders here. But sometimes you're fighting against rogue fusions that are multiple monsters that are fused together. Sometimes you're fighting against archangels, which are these gigantic creatures in a different art style in a really cool way that looks fascinating and has their own set of abilities and their own set of rules that you need to play around all of these boss fights are really cool i played most of the post game just to fight one boss because i was excited to see what that boss would be like and the effects that it could have in battle and i absolutely think the boss fights are worth it there are a couple of really cool secret bosses that you can fight too that i really really like but even if it's mechanically sound and even if the boss fights and the the captain fights are really good is the story good enough to keep you moving forward honestly yeah the story in this game is really interesting. 
you are one of many people that have been brought to this world for unknown reasons, taken from your world, pulled from your world to this one, and you have to try and survive. You have to try and figure out a way back home. You have to try and figure out what's going on. And there are people all across the island that need help. These people, some of which can become your partners and help you throughout your journey. You can, you know, continue their side quests and you can get to know them better and your relationship deepens and that gives you different mechanical benefits. But you can also date one of them. And they're all really fun and interesting and they pay off, especially if you recruit them all. It pays off super well at the end of the game. The only complaint I would have for your partner characters is that to deepen the relationship, you have to rest at camp. Resting at camp gives you opportunities for you to talk to them, which allows you to deepen your friendship, right? However, it's kind of nebulous how many times you need to rest or how long they need to be with you before you get the next dialogue to move forward. And so even though I had a favorite partner, I had to put her on the bench until I had everybody else maxed out as well so that I could then go back to her, which meant she was much lower level. It didn't take her long to get caught up, but it was kind of annoying because... I liked some of the characters more than I liked others when it comes to the partners, and I didn't necessarily want to drag them all around with me forever just to be able to get their friendship up so I could see their events and quests. I had my favorites, and I wanted to spend time with my favorites more than anything else. Another slight annoyance is that once you have them to full friendship, you don't really get any more deep conversations. Every once in a while, they'll have a line to say about something that's happened in the story, but that's pretty much it. It kind of has that syndrome of, well, you finished my story. What are we still talking for? We're friends, right? Which is kind of unfortunate. I understand it would have been a lot more work to code in extra dialogues for every time you go to rest. But maybe to have 10 that rotate and just have those throw out every time you rest. There's a every third rest or something. It has a chance to play one of those. Anything like that would have made it a little bit more interesting than just you and Kaylee talk about past romances you've had. Okay, I didn't even get to see her portrait, though. You know what I mean? I didn't even get to see Barclay's portrait, and it's, it's just a shame. Side characters are also really good. I love the ranger captains. Each one of them has their own little thing that makes them fun, and some of them have more importance to the story than others you can also get little dialogues with them and yente if you come back to ranger hq throughout the game those are really fun i wish there was a way to guarantee that you get to see all of them because even though i would go back quite often i know i didn't get to see all of them and that was kind of a shame the way the main story resolves too with the main bad guy and everything happening there is pretty interesting though having completed the final quest which is in the post game, which we'll talk about the post game in a minute. I still don't feel like I necessarily got the full answer. Like maybe there's something still missing and maybe that's to come in DLC. I'm not sure, but one DLC pack is already out and I completed that as well. And it was fun. It was relatively short, but it introduced a bunch of new monsters and had a new interesting character with some fun boss fights. It was good. It was worth the price I'd say, but it didn't necessarily expand on what I was looking for from the end there. There are two more things I want to highlight before we get into my biggest issue with this game. And those two are two of my favorite things in this game. The soundtrack is incredible. Wherever We Are Now is already one of my most played songs for the year, uh, just from getting to hear it in the Gramophone Cafe. But also the, the boss theme, the fusion theme, those are very, very good. And the final boss theme is great. The music in this game was always a highlight to me. And that da -da -da -da, ba -da 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 -da, every time just made me hyped. Especially once I got the fusion version, which would give you lyrics in there too. Da -da -da -da. I was having a great time every single time. And every time I went back to the Gramophone Cafe, it was just really wonderful to have that do, 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 do. every single time the area music is really good there are some areas that i would spend more time in than i necessarily needed to just to be able to listen to it this is absolutely a contender for best ost for the year i love the soundtrack for cassette beasts and the other main thing that i super love in this game are the monster designs i think they're really really well done even from down to like the basic you know, hey, this is your, you're going to run into these monsters everywhere. These are your Raditas and Pidgeys, right? They're still super unique. They look really, really good. And 
Traffic Crab, Carnaviper. Those are super cute. I'm kind of glad in some ways they don't have plushies for these monsters because I would want them all. But I don't think there's a bad monster in the mix. There's some that I don't love as much as others for sure, but I can't think of a single monster design that I saw and I was like, nah, that one's a miss for me. Almost every time I saw a monster, I was like, yes, I need this in my party. And then you could only put six monsters in your party. And the few times that didn't happen, it was, oh, I'm curious what that's going to evolve into. What, what kind of options am I looking at when it transforms? And there's so many references, too. There's Kamen Rider references all over the place. There's a couple of Godzilla references. Really, really well done monster designs. Really, really cool sounds for them. And I think their animations are perfect. I can't think of a single bad monster design in this entire game. And again, that's not even counting the Archangels. The Archangels are an incredible, incredible bit of design work that they use completely different rules from every other sprite in the game. It's wonderful. One last thing I wanted to highlight, too, before I forgot. There are some movement upgrades that you get, which you don't normally get in a lot of monster collecting games. I think Monster Sanctuary is the only one that comes to mind where you're going to get, hey, actual, like, traversing the level style upgrades. Because even in, like, Pokemon, you get Fly or Strength or Cut. And those are great. They're technically movement upgrades, but they all fill a very specific niche and you don't get to do a lot of cool things with them. But in Cassette Beast, you get four different abilities that are really good for climbing or getting around structures or getting across platforms. And you get a fifth ability that's really good for just getting around. I think they did a really good job of letting you gain better control of the world. Early on, I wanted to fast travel to get around because it took a long time to get where I was going. And by the end of the game, I had no problem. I was just boosting around everywhere, having a great time. My only real complaint, and it's unfortunately a big one, is the post-game. I don't think the stuff in the post-game is necessarily bad. There's some really good stories in there. My main problem is that to get to the final quest of the post-game, you have to complete all of this little post-game side quests, which wouldn't really be too much of an issue, but the main way that you do that is by using the task board. And you have to get the task board to level 4 by doing 50 quests on it to be able to do the final post-game quest and that took me about eight hours <laughs> because the the stories in there were interesting finding new characters and interacting with them was great but a lot of it was hey go defeat this many rogue fusions go defeat this many unstable fusions uh go take a monster that you have already evolved because you were trying to fill out your bestiary and go catch a new one and get it to five stars so that you can present it to this professor and that'll complete the quest. Go to this one area in the game where an evolved version of one of your partner's monsters exists and has a 7% chance to spawn in any combat encounter. And there's only two that you have to constantly refresh through on this one section of the map. And one of the things that can spawn there has like a 75% chance to spawn. <laughs> Go there and fight it over and over and over again until you've beaten six of them, which took me almost an hour. <laughs> it's just unfortunate because it, it feels like padding in a way that the rest of the game had not. I had almost completed my bestiary by the time I finished the main game and then got even more work done on it while doing the DLC. And so this just felt like busy work. And so when I got to the final quest and I beat the final boss, as it were, I was actually really disappointed because when I finished it, I got a couple lines of dialogue and that was it. And the, the dialogue was basically, hey, you know, those task boards are never ending. But yeah, I'll, I'll go back and do more of those, I guess. But I probably won't for a while. At some point, I'll go back and try to get the rest of the achievements. I almost got them all. I got 110 out of 123, and most of those are for getting bootlegs, which I didn't even talk about earlier, bootlegs. I'll let you figure that one out on your own. They're really cool, and they're basically this game's version of Shinies with a different type and different moves. They're really interesting. I wound up with like four maybe five over the course of the entire game, but I could have definitely been hunting for more. There's a cool mechanic in the game to allow you to do it, but ultimately, I think this game is absolutely worth playing. I think the boss fights are worth experiencing. I think the monsters are worth seeing and catching and spending time with, and I think the music is absolutely worth listening to. The story is worth experiencing. 
I just don't think it's necessarily worth doing all the post game because I don't, I'm at the point now where I think I would have rather put that eight hours into something else, even after having completed it. And so ultimately I firmly recommend cassette beast. Maybe just don't worry about the post game. And if the devs ever hear this, please just make it where they're guaranteed spawns. If you're got a quest to find a monster and you're in that area, please. Until next time, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I've been Trey. This has been the Full Spectrum. And remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum. The Cassette Beast has to offer.